Welcome to the Decent People Podcast, a production of Decential Media, where we're committed to telling the stories of the founders, builders, and visionaries who are creating a new decentralized economy and internet experience. You guys know it as Web3 or blockchain, and we're going to bring you the smartest and most interesting people in the space for intimate conversations that reveal their background, how they got into crypto in the first place, and what they're doing today to make a decentralized future a reality. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to check out our site at Decentral.io. Now, to the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Decent People Podcast by Decentral Media. I'm your host, Stephen Ladden. This week, I'm here with the founder and CEO of the virtual brand group, Justin Hochberg. Justin, welcome to the program. Thanks, Stephen. Glad to be here. Just a little disappointed that we're actually doing this in the real world and not the virtual world. I just have to kick off with that statement. It feels a little <laughs> antithetical to the topic of the day. I do realize that uh, not everybody has uh, gone fully virtual, but um, maybe we'll get there by the end of the conversation. Right. I think that the next step would be to have our own avatars and uh, have, have podcast. Transition podcasting into the metaverse would re really be the next evolution of this conversation for sure. Yes. And uh, I can, we can, we can do that right now. In fact, we actually do that for certain people. We do a whole bunch of business to business consulting um, and, and executions where we actually create virtual worlds for people to do their daily business in. So wow. not a problem. That's, that's fascinating. So yeah, maybe, maybe just as a, as a jump off then, what, Sorry, what is have I already group? have I already derailed your questions? Which is no. Which, which uh, now, now you know what it's like to be married to me. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Look, it, it's it's a uh, conversations are fluid. We 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 roll with what uh, is presented, and and uh, the the start of which you know you talk about virtual brand group and what you guys are able to provide to different businesses. So so how does that? I guess how does that? What does that look like? And and how did you come up with the idea to provide the service that you provide? Where did it originate? All of that stuff. Well, let's just start with what we do. So we, we build, we strategize, we build, and we operate global brands. Think anything from sports to entertainment to fashion to lifestyle brands, favorite brands that you shop for, spend time with. We work with the glo biggest global partners in the world, and we help, quote unquote, put them in the metaverse. That's our tagline. We put you in the metaverse. And that means some people need more handholding. Some people need less. But ultimately, we're not an agency. We're not a BBDO. We're not a McKinsey. We're not here to like tell you a pie chart and all that. We actually are the doers, the dreamers, the makers, the futurists. We go deep into this world, whether it be social gaming, crypto, uh, rewards programs, uh, uh, blockchain but platforms like Decentraland or Sandbox, we are the builders of this next generation, Web3. And what we do is we go, brand, you need to be here. Here's how you do it. And not only here's how you do it, but here's how you make $20 million in 18 months. In fact, we say to people, if we can't make you $20 million in top line revenue in the first 18 months, then we shouldn't be in business together. So let me get this straight. So twenty, twenty million dollars, eighteen months. How 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 do you how does that even happen? And and how is that even something that you can uh, tell people that hey, we can we can help provide this to you? Well, I just told you. I you know we just told you how you could do it. So you're asking how specific. do we actually build a bit? How yeah, do we yeah, build a business? Exactly. How, 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 what's the business plan around that bold statement of Correct. how we help people? Correct. Well, I, I think the sim simplest version of that why we're so confident about that is over 20 years and this is your question too the how did i get here over 20 years i have intersected in three areas that almost usually don't intersect which is technology working for a number of years five for microsoft on consumer products such as digital video recording and interactive tv and streaming media which broke the record industry and 15 years in Hollywood, creating stories, telling stories, making TV shows. And then the third is working with global brands from sports leagues to Unilever, Procter & Gamble, DirecTV, go down the list, 
200 of the Fortune 1000. And so if you think of nature's strongest structure, it's a triangle. So my triangle is tech, storytelling, and brands. That's how I got here. About two years ago, I woke up in the pandemic and I, I'm a parent of then was a nine and 12 year old. And this is the why. This is the founder's journey section. If you're tap, bookmarking this tab right now where you want to click into it, the why, how did I get here? So I'm a parent and we were the family that had no screens during the week. Weekend, you want to watch TV, no screens. Pandemic hits, you're on eight hours of Zoom. Now, I get it. That's all you had to do. But that was followed by three hours of Fortnite and Roblox. So as my wife and I sit there lamenting the fact that we went from really holding the line, which is not easy as a parent to hold the line, be the uncool parent, to now an initial three hours, I was wondering, all I thought was, this is going to be like playing Xbox or Donkey Kong. It's just like wasting time. But two things happened. One is I looked at my credit card bills. Now, what does Warren Buffett say, Stephen? He says, invest in what you know. So mm -hmm. what did I know? That my credit card bills were going da 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 da, -da and uh, insert cool infographic into the podcast, da 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 da, -da <laughs> rising graph bar chart there of Fortnite skins and Roblox Robux. So my kids were spending money on this like crazy. So red flag, what's this all about? So I go in and I start doing what every parent really should do, which is if you want to if you want to connect with your kids, show interest in what they do. So I sat down with my kid, my son, and I played Fortnite. I sucked, but I shot and I got shot, and he laughed. And I sat down with my daughter, and we built houses and beds, and we went around to dot me and collected pets. And here's what I learned. This is the aha. Insert new infographic. Aha, right there. Aha. Wait a second. They're not just wasting time because they're bored and can't go play with friends because we're in lockdown. They were recreating their social lives that had been ripped apart from them during the pandemic. So their activity was less about the game and more about talking to people, making friends, collaborating in groups, building things, and socializing. And when I connected those dots, and again, let's get back to the triangle here, Triangle was, wow, this serves a real human nature purpose. Like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the desire to socialize and feel seen and heard, one side of the triangle. Two, it's a real ecosystem where people are making tons of money, as I could represent by my credit card. So it wasn't some ethereal business model that I had to research. It was like, literally, I could see if I'm spending this much and I'm the, you know, I'm the, I'm the guy who doesn't want to let them spend, what are other people letting people spend, right? So that was two. And then the third aha, which was the missing piece of the triangle was, wait a second, I'm in Fortnite and Adopt Me and all these other games. Where are global brands? Where's the NFL? Where's, where's Forever 21? Where's Gucci? Where are all these? And they weren't there. Now it comes full where we said the moment was, wait a second, this is going to be a massive opportunity, even bigger than the internet or web one or social media, web two. And yet there's still no brands who have figured out how to get in there and take advantage of that. So I founded the virtual brand group to be the bridge between this giant population of, you know, Gen Alpha, Gen Z and young millennials who want to have this experience virtually and brands who generally are slow moving, cautious, and don't know how to adapt into these new environments. And that's where the virtual brand group came from. Amazing. Amazing. And so what, what, I, what I love about that journey is organically, you were being a parent, you were, you were experiencing what it is to connect with your, your kids. And from that place, the aha moment of, wait a minute, there's opportunity here in something that is inherently being used to socialize and connect and to, you know, go about your daily life, albeit in a virtual setting. So that's, that's really cool. So how come you could say that in so short of time and it took me that much longer? That, <laughs> that, that's not good. 
I'm supposed to be better at that. You got it. You got it in three sentences. I took, as my wife said, shorten it up, Justin, tighten that up. Well, you know, I, I, I think the, the, I'm not the one who, who lived the experience and came up with the, the company and was able to put the dots together. I'm just relaying to you the, uh, the synopsis, uh, from from an outsider's view because but it's but it's you need the details that you provided because it, it 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 shows one i think your ingenuity and two how you're addressing that uh, basically a need as as you say in terms of the brands and how much how much do you think it, it's it, this is so fascinating to me how, how much do you think your background in you know the the kind of triangle that you talk about with with tech and entertainment positions you as the man to to or you know person to to lead virtual brand group into this next generation of business collaboration and stuff like that because it, it seems you, you have such a unique skill set from those intersecting paths uh, way back when you know you just pointed out something really interesting which is if you think about all the pieces of any business from a to z uh, let's just say we make donuts for a living. You got somebody who like, you know, founds the company, then someone who like finds the raw ingredient, someone ships the ingredient and someone runs the line and someone picks the flavors and someone packages and so on. like, you know, any, any product, it doesn't matter, has that sort of A to Z-ness of it, right? The trick here is if you want to have someone build you a Roblox game or a Decentraland game, there's game developers. And if you want to have someone who knows a lot about NFT marketplace, you got Polygon or, you know, Inevitable, right? So that's a layer two infrastructure. And if you want to do, you know, and then you keep going to the A to Z, right? And now you've got all these different vendors who do all these things. But if you hire a games developer, they're not going to come up with the ability to figure out how to do avatar to virtual commerce, uh, to physical commerce. That's just not what a game developer does. There's a lane. So the answer to your question is, you have put your finger on the thing that has allowed us to help brands so succinctly and so, so successfully, which is we combine the attributes of all pieces that you need. We build, we market, and we operate, and we innovate. And that is the big thing. The other piece of the puzzle, and this is part of what was implied by my original triangle, is I have personally spent my entire life be pushing, selling, developing things that people basically said were the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Now, a lot of them were right, but enough of them were wrong that got me here. So may I give you an example? Please. So when I first went to Microsoft, they acquired the rights to what you now know as a program guide, that thing that you could just navigate with your you know, voice command or your button that shows you everything was on. Now, this is going back a while ago, but there used to be the only two ways to find out what was on TV. You would read the newspaper, right, or, or TV guide, or there was this scrolling channel that went, went like, you know, just scroll. And if you happen to look away for like 10 seconds and you missed 7.30, you had to wait for it to scroll back, right? So there I am, Columbia MBA, working in Redmond, in the middle of interactive TV. They just bought web TV, couldn't be more excited and naive. And this guy says, look, we just acquired the rights to an electronic version of this thing. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, you could move it around. You could see what's going on. They showed me a prototype of digital video recording where you could be like, oh, in three days, I want that. I come back. I tell my girlfriend, now my wife, I said, you're never going to believe this. That whole thing that you used to do now, you got this thing called the program guide. And she goes, you went to business school for that? Nobody is ever going to use that. Okay? When I was in TV... I helped build the first billion dollar franchise for reality TV. Now this, I want to make it clear. I want an infographic in this that says, this is a business statement, not a political statement. I helped develop the original TV show called The Apprentice starring Donald Trump. Business statement, not political, okay? Beyond the creative aspect of it, one of the things that I did was I invented 
putting brands into that show. And I did that for the same reason I did Virtual Brand Room. In 2004, the biggest threat to advertisers, you gotta go back in your history, was the advent of digital video recording, which was going to time shift and allow people to skip ads. So there wasn't digital buying, no one had Facebook, no one on dot coms. So this was the only way. Turns out, I was probably the only guy in the history of TV to have just worked with stars and now producing a TV show. So I go to the producers and I say, look, the biggest problem is they are afraid of skipping. So let's put the brands into the show. Let's charge them to be in the show. And therefore, they can't skip. Now, I knew that this was a massive problem in the ad industry, and I knew the technology inside and out. And you know what everybody said to me, including Mark Burnett, the famous producer, Survivor, Apprentice, The Voice, etc. He, he says, I'm not going to do the right English accent, but he goes, that's the dumbest idea I've ever seen. No one's ever going to do that. Don't bother. A month later, I come back. I said, I got this, 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 and this brand. That became, we charged $6 million an episode to put brands in there. And they got more than that value because they had one hour of TV. Now, I tell you that story because that is the same triangle then that I'm doing now, which was technology meets storytelling meets brand choke point. And so how, like, like Daniel San in The Karate Kid, I have been waxing on and off for the All Valley Karate Ch Championship for a very long time. And here I am today, ready to fight. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, and, and it's such a cool kind of uh, culmination of everything that you've, that you've been working on and working for and working to. Did you ever envision that all of those different paths would intersect with Virtual Brand Group in the way that they have? Well, yes, because I specifically, I mean, I have worked at that technology storytelling and brand choke point going back 20 years. And so the question was, what's the next one that, that will be? Three years ago, I did not know that we would all go virtual, all get comfortable sitting on screens all the time. But as soon as I saw this, it was, oh, I've seen this movie before. I know how this ends. I know what the consumer problems are. In fact, I even have a slide, which I'd be happy to share with you in our brand presentation. Do you remember an ad in maybe the 80s or 90s, and it was an anti-drug campaign. And it was, this is your brain, and there was yeah. a picture of an egg, right? Sure. And then what happens? Egg, egg falls in the pan or gets cracked and sizzles, and this is your brain on drugs. Right. So we have a slide that says, this is your brain. This is an executive's brain on the metaverse and what you're thinking about. So we talk about the three things that the executive's brain. So the long story is, I have seen this time and time again over the last two decades in many incarnations as to what's the problem, what's the inertia, what's the, we, how to sauce out what the brands are going to do, what, how to structure deals to make it easy for them. So again, I've been doing this over and over again. So we, let me just put it this way. Here's the best example to your question is, how was I ready for this? When we launched this company last year, which was literally a year ago, you're like, you're my one year anniversary birthday present, Steven. This is it. This is <laughs> my present from you, okay? Happy birthday. I said, look, can we get one brand and put up one experience in less than six months? And if we can do that and prove the model, we're gonna go get as many brands as possible. And not only do we do that, we got Forever 21, which is owned by the fantastic authentic brand group, which owns 50 different brands from Elvis to Reebok to David Beckham to uh, Sports Illustrated. We stood them up between signing a deal and launching in less than 10 weeks. Wow. 10 weeks. 10 weeks. And you know what we call that at the, at the virtual brand? It's all about speed to impact. That's it. How quickly can we make an impact in your business? And were you able then to parlay, show the success with Forever 21 with their umbrella, with the authentic umbrella of brands? I mean, and, and was that a, a, a cognizant move when you were trying to secure Forever 21 
that hey they're under this umbrella which would also if we demonstrate as you said within that first six months a win now we have a, a sea of other options that could potentially also be wins for us that are easy to get you know i i never thought about that <laughs> yes absolutely for sure cool so so the, the next question being was that when you were trying to decide which would be the jump off, which would be that first brand that you would go after, did you have others in mind at the time or was this, you know, a very carefully curated target? So that's a great question. So again, we always go back to what's the filter we were using. Uh, so we talked about some of the filters about, is it someone who wants to uh, actually, you know, actually do something quickly? Um, the other piece was, I actually knew that Roblox obviously is, is a really great platform because it's got scale. There's 200 million users monthly, 50 million daily. It's one of the few places where there's a large number of people and it's very brand friendly because it has a lot of younger people. So when I looked at this, we actually came across a study that showed what brands did Roblox uh, players, consumers really want. And Forever 21 was one of those brands. So, you know, one of the things that we do slightly different than a lot of other people is we spent a lot of time getting to know the local community of, of, of just designers, developers, game makers, all that stuff before we actually approached Roblox. Because we always believe that like one of the problems about technology, think about Comic-Con or Sundance. How did they start? A bunch of outliers, right? Fringe festivals. Yeah. And it had its just devotees that didn't have any place else to be. And that became like cool and hip. Eventually brands are like, Oh, we got to tap into what's cool and hip. And they, what I like to say, colonize it. Right. And that's not to say it's not valuable, but it's not the same anymore. So, you know, we try and get in early from the ground up and build a community, not colonize from the top down. Got it. Got it. Got it. So in terms, in terms of building those communities, uh, what, can, what can we expect to see moving forward from Virtual Brand Group as you guys continue to move forward, continue to grow, continue to secure different and unique partnerships? Is there, are there, are there, uh, is there a world in which you guys go back into you know, more traditional film and TV? What, what does it look like? Well, so the answer is um, a couple of things. One is, we have a pipeline of about 25 different brands across five sectors right now that we are working with. And the five sectors are sports, entertainment, lifestyle, beauty, and fashion. And though we will start announcing those in you know, Q3 uh, through next year, you'll see several big activations around the holiday time for, for massive brands in really innovative ways. Uh, on a more short-term basis, the next thing you will immediately see, as, as some people might know, um, we launched the first ever virtual Barbie fashion line about two weeks ago. So Barbie is one of the most iconic toys. It's probably also one of the most iconic women in the world. Um, I think there's 100 Barbies sold every minute worldwide. I mean, it's quite an extraordinary like, you know, like scale of like business. So Mattel chose us above themselves or anybody else to create the first ever virtual line now. So that's now live on Roblox and you can go get a line of clothing. Uh, this is not a doll line. This is you wearing Barbie clothing, like t-shirt, hat, denim. Um, and it's all replicated down to the stitching, the pockets, the buttons. It looks perfect. Okay. Now, on top of that, you can also go to Forever 21 and buy those exact same real life items. Okay, so that's one side of the triangle. That's the other side of the triangle. And here's the third leg of the triangle. Breaking news, insert infographic. Very soon we will announce a competition to twin with your avatar, i.e. you and your avatar wearing the same outfits and we will have a series of prizes that will treat you and your avatar like avastars. And I won't announce what the prizes are, but they involve everything from being flown someplace to being put up on a giant billboard to having your real closet turned into a virtual closet. And so 
those things will become the next level of how we integrate virtual fashion and real fashion. That's fascinating. And, and in doing so, you're also helping propel and perpetuate the metaverse amongst people, which I think is also a really cool element to all of this, which is getting back to if we want to uh, bookend the conversation with uh, story story points. It's, you know, you, 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 you're playing Fortnite with your son, you're building things with your daughter. It still comes back to the user experience and people. And so that's really neat, I think, to be running those uh, contests because it then propels people who may not even, the, 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 the average person who may not even, the metaverse may not even be a thought in their head. And now all of a sudden, what you guys are developing is helping to perpetuate, hey, maybe I should create an avatar for myself so I can enter this contest. Like that's a very, uh, I love it. It's, it's super smart. Well, thank you. Can I just double click on that for a second? I, I think <laughs> the bigger thing, the bigger thing that we're really trying to get across is, is that the value of the metaverse on a practical level, which are many, is on a personal level, not a business level, is, you know, the world is not as kind as we'd all like it to be. And we're lucky, you know, you're in New York uh, or I'm in LA, but life can be tough. And here is a world where you can establish yourself and own a pair of Forever 21 Barbie outfits or Gucci sneakers or, you know, or Gucci bags or Nike sneakers, and you can make friends. You know, there are... 17 million new friends are made every day on Roblox, right? So in terms of, you know, just think about high school. It's not an easy time. You know, you're picked on, you don't fit in, you don't know who you are, you're developing, and, and maybe it's even college. Here's a world where you get to be whoever you want to be, however you want to look, not how you were born, not how you were bullied, not how you were thought you had to be by your parent or your sibling. And you can express yourself, make your own friends, have your own experiences. And on a humanistic level, that's what propels the metaverse. Not that you can buy something or twin something. It's the pure joy in feeling free to express yourself. And if we can be a small part of empowering people to be remove the physical constraints of that the world places on them, then that's something I want to sign up to for the good of all humanity. And, and to take that a step further, I think by doing that, if then someone gains the confidence because of the metaverse in expressing who they truly are and what they truly believe in and however they feel they need to show up in the world, they can then take that experience and apply it to real life, I think would be the real, I mean, then, then you're, you're, you, the work is, is kind of on a whole nother level. Well, you know, it, you are so on top of it because here's the truth. I'm going to support exactly what you're saying. There's a study that said that a third of 13 to 39-year-olds, and this was like three months ago, so let's just assume it keeps moving up. A third of 13 to 39-year-olds all say that what they do in the metaverse dictates what they do and how they act in the real world. So what I'm saying that's different about this versus web one, web two, or anything else, your movie, TV, podcast, is that new behavior patterns, un you're unleashed from the physical constraints of your society, the world around you. And just to bring it back to a brand solution, if you don't realize that now, then your brand becomes obsolete because the behavior pattern about what you like and who you want to spend time with and what products you want to be with are all being shaped there more than in the physical world. So, and so that's, in many ways, that's what we teach people how to do is how to harness that self empowerment ethos that exists when you free yourself from the, you know, when you take the red pill, according to Morpheus, and free your mind, what is possible? That's what the virtual brand group helps brands do. Uh, Justin, that's what, what a statement. And I think it's, it's super cool and, and innovative. And if, if 
to be to play one sm small part. But I mean, you guys are playing a massive part. But to see where this goes, I think is is really. I mean, I, I, I've watched this movie. Fantastic. I, I'd sell you a ticket and the popcorn. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd, I'd watch it both in real life and in the metaverse, just to, just to clarify. Well, I knew that because, because the metaverse in real life are not two different things. They happen simultaneously. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got my avatar and I've got my physical life. That's the beauty of it. And I think that's important that you're pointing out. I think that's a great thing for your people to know is it's not one or the other. It's simultaneous. It's back and forth. That's the beauty of it. And, and, and just to, to wrap, do you think at some point we will all have our own avatar? Like, will having an avatar of yourself be just as commonplace as owning a pet or anything else? I, I think having an avatar will just be as common as having an email address. Mm. Awesome. Well, time will tell but it seems like we're certainly headed in that direction. And while we've been talking, I've been having people create your avatar. So we'll unveil that at our next meetup. Thank you. Yes. Uh, as long as it has a, a big, beautiful uh, Jufro and, uh, you know, a, a, a sunny disposition, I think will be uh, avatar and real uh, avatar and uh, call it real Steve will be, you know, symbiotic in that sense. Well, here's the question, real Steve. Do you really want Avatar Steve to be the same? Or is there something inside of you that says, hey, I've always wanted to. And by the way, here's the other thing about this is it's not a final decision. One of the things about the metaverse that people miss is they think that it's a finished product, like a movie. Once the movie is done and if it sucks, there's nothing to do about it. If you want to be real Steve and virtual Steve and you want them to look the same today, that's awesome. And if tomorrow you want to have flaming hair and, you know, wear a kilt, that's awesome too. And that's why, you know, did you know that Roblox is the third largest e-com site in the world in terms of units, only behind Amazon and Alibaba? Because people buy so much stuff to customize their avatar on a daily basis. So as you think about what virtual Steve looks like, don't be constrained, be anything you want to be. You can, you, can, you can unleash the creative potential, which to that end, I, I mean, we could, we could tangent on this all day. It's, it's so in, in as many ways that you can iterate yourself, you can, you could probably do more in the metaverse to your point. I mean, it, it, if you wanted to uh, get bagpipes and a kilt, that might be a little more, there might be a few more steps in real Steve's life to, to attain that versus a couple clicks and then having that be part of his identity in the metaverse. Right, but let's even take it further. Forget just the way you look. Like, there are already dozens, if not thousands, of race car games, right? So if you want to be a race driver, it's kind of hard to be a race driver in the real world, right? Um, but in the virtual world, you can be a race car driver, and you might end up, like, you know, we're talking with a racing league about creating a meta Grand Prix. Like, you know, if you want to be a world-famous race driver, you might be able to be one in the metaverse. So it goes, you know, look, my 14 year old won't pick up his shoes at home, but he has a job working at a pizza joint in Roblox. <laughs> Explain that to me. Okay, so Steven, we've covered a lot of ground here and I hope some of it, uh, no, that's not true. I hope every single thing I said was useful, although I know most of it wasn't. And I hope everything at least was entertaining. And as my wife would say, I'm sure that was not true either. Nonetheless, here's my offer for one time only, just for because I like you. You know, at the end, there's always these ads in these podcasts and you do this and you get 20% off, uh, you know, X, Y, Z. Here's what I'm going to do for you. If people DM me and they reference Stephen Decentral Podcast in the DM, I will do, I will have someone on my team do a brand audit for free from the virtual brand group to help you figure out how to get in the metaverse. That's my offer to you. How's that? Oh, I love it. And I, and I hope people, listeners, take advantage of it because what uh, Justin and Virtual Brand Group are providing, I mean, it's it's the future. So take advantage of that and uh, get that audit and and see, learn some things as we have uh, through this conversation today. And if, that, and if that's too much work for you, just check out any, any social handle, Get Metaversed, which is our handle where we're posting the latest case studies, data, um, how we achieve things, 
brand uh, activations, all that stuff that get metaverse, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, that's the easiest way to track anything that we're doing. Amazing, amazing. Well, Justin Hochberg, founder and CEO of Virtual Brand Group. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm Stephen Land, your host for the Decent People Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Meta welcome. <laughs>